Welcome everyone! Have you ever been out taking photos of absolutely amazing subjects with these precious moments? Aren't they adorable? <laughs> Only to be like disappointed that something was in your way. I mean like really in your way. So that just it just ruins an otherwise amazing photo op. Let's fix that. Let's discuss three different ways to deal with these unwanted elements. We're gonna get rid of these little twigs. We're gonna get rid of the big stick. Hi, I'm Kate Sylvia, a nature photography instructor and a digital enthusiast. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by and I hope you learned something during your visit that helps you in your photographic journey. I'll be sharing helpful tips for each of these methods throughout the video, so if you can, stick around till the end to learn as much as you can. So let's get started. Method number one, the remove tool. It's very similar to the one in Lightroom, but I've gotten some better results in Photoshop with certain images. Okay, so we're going to try and remove these obnoxious sticks that are in front of this image. So kudos to the parents for building an absolutely fantastic nest for these kiddos, but the sticks are obnoxious. They're in my way. And apparently they're in her way too. Wait, you're, you're on my neck. Get, get, get off my neck. That, that's my neck. <clears throat> All right, back to the remove tool. It's located under the healing tool, the little band-aid, where you can access it by typing the letter J. You'll want to make sure that sample all layers is checked. I leave the remove after each stroke off for any detailed work, but for an easy subject with like a really clean background, you can leave that on and just draw a circle around the whole thing in one stroke to remove it. But in this case, I'm going to leave it off. So I'm just going to draw over these areas I want removed and I'm going to click the checkbox when I want it to, to go to work after each one. So I'm going to do this again and again and again. I find for really complex subjects with, you know, kind of busy backgrounds like, like these birds, areas like these that less is more. So go slowly, bit by bit for better results. Okay, but what if it doesn't work? What if I have areas that it just struggled, like the beak or the chick's head, or if I, you know, if the stick went across the bird's eyes? Then I might have to resort to method number two, which is the PETA method. What is PETA? It's the pain in the ass method. That's what it is. And that's just called good old fashioned cloning. Type the S key to bring up the clone or stamp tool. All this is, all cloning is, is copying and pasting pixels. So click on the alter option key to select your source area where you're going to copy from and then click and drag or just click in order to paste it. Some important tips for using the clone tool successfully. Switch between a hard edge brush and a soft edge brush for different results depending on how close you want to get to a particular subject. The smaller brush with a harder edge for really tiny areas that you don't want to create any accidental blur. Resample a lot. Alter option click a new source often in order to avoid those repeating patterns. And you can even paste with a lower opacity brush to soften transitions. Sometimes when you copy and paste, it's pretty obvious that you've done that. Copy and paste again with a lower opacity brush on the little border between what was old and what is new, and that'll help soften that transition. With the beak here, a smaller, like medium hard edged brush is what I needed to maintain the line of the beak. So I'm going to copy and paste very frequently right in there in order to maintain that line of the beak. It's definitely a pain in the, mm, but sometimes you just got to do it. Okay. Method number three, the fully AI, we're going to let artificial intelligence just do its thing. This method starts by making a selection. Now you can use any selection tool available to you. You can select subject, you can select sky, you can do selections with the individual selection tools. In this case, I'm going to use the lasso tool. So I'm going to type the shortcut L to get the lasso tool. And this is, this is pretty simple. You're going to draw a line around whatever it is that you want to remove. And then you're going to go up to the generative fill box. Now, if you don't see this, go to window and then contextual taskbar in order to bring that up. 
So I'm simply going to click in the field where you would normally write something, but I'm going to leave it blank. I'm just going to not tell it to do anything. And then I'm going to click generate. But it's not always perfect. The results can be unpredictable and there is some trial and error involved. When you have fine detail that you're working around, smaller selections, more frequent selections are recommended. Now keep in mind the generative fill AI does require an internet connection to work while the other tools that I've shown today, they do not. So every time you use this tool, you're going to get three different choices. I would delete the, uh, the choices that you don't want just to keep the file size a little bit lower. Now, when I reached the point of removing the stick across his beak, the AI really struggled. It turned it into what looked like a duck beak a couple of times. It just wasn't working time and time again. So I resorted to combining the AI method with another trick I've had to use once or twice in the past. This is not something that I do all the time. So I went back to all the photos that I took and I found one where the baby's head was above the branches. And so I did a selection. I opened that one up in Photoshop. I did a selection of his beak and I just went edit copy or command or control C. And then I clicked on this new photo that I'm working on and I just did edit edit paste, which is just command or control V as in Victor. And then I added a mask to kind of blend it out. You can command or control T free transform to change the size and positioning. Use the move tool to change the positioning of that new layer right there. Now, the first time that I did this process, the AI worked fine. It did a great job getting rid of that branch that was going right across his beak. Of course, this time for the demo, it just didn't work because, you know, when you're doing this for a crowd, of course, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's just unpredictable. That's the thing about AI is you just really never know what you're going to get. So between these three methods, you can pretty much remove just about anything. With regard to which one to try first, I would probably use the remove tool right out of the gate. That's probably going to be the most reliable uh, it's not relying completely on AI like the generative fill method, and it's definitely less painful than the PETA method, the clone and stamp tool. So I would start with that and then go to the generative AI if the remove tool doesn't work. And if you don't find a good uh, compromise between all of those, then I might try the uh, clone and stamp tool. But whatever you do, don't give up. It's possible to do just about anything in Photoshop these days, which is both cool and scary. For a more in-depth look at cloning, if that's something that you struggle with, click on this video right here. You'll find it really helpful. Thanks for being here. I will see you guys later.